This is the Motorola Moto G82 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, we need to use a hair dryer or a heat gun to apply heat to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the plastic back plate. There are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once the screws have been removed, we need to place a plastic pry tool in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and run along the edges to pop off the catches. And then the back housing can be lifted to the side and the fingerprint scanner cable can be disconnected. The back housing itself is made of plastic. The camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. Then FC antenna is located on the top center and there's some graphite film towards the bottom over the speaker assembly. On the other side there are numerous antenna flex cables around the border and the LED flash board is located here. Now the graphite film needs to be peeled off and the graphite film helps transfer heat. And then the battery cable can be disconnected. Now we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board that need to be disconnected by popping them off. There's some graphite film covering the front facing camera connector that needs to be peeled off so we can disconnect and remove it. Here's a better look at the 16 megapixel front facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw on the left side of the board which is holding it down that needs to be removed. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. On the main board there's a 50 megapixel primary camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide and a 2 megapixel macro. The primary camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera cables can be disconnected by popping them off. There's a secondary microphone on the top and there's copper tape over the front shields. There's also a liquid damage indicator sticker which is the white sticker. The SIM card and memory card reader is located on the back as well as the proximity sensor and the two other connectors for the cameras. There's also copper tape and thermal paste on the back shields. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see a thermal pad on the RAM and thermal paste on the processor and these chips. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. The speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at that. The flex cable connecting the subboard to the main board, as well as the two other ends of the coaxial cable need to be disconnected from the subboard. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. There's a rubber gasket around the charger port and headphone jack and the primary microphone is located underneath the shield. Here's a look at the other side. To remove the battery, there are no pull tabs provided to help us pry it off, so we're going to have to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply it to the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery is removed, we can see the flex cable for the screen, which is right out through an opening in the mid-frame. So if you need to replace the screen, you'd have to take the back plate off, remove the screws and remove the back housing, disconnect the battery cable and pry the battery off, giving you access to the screen cable. At that point, you'd heat up in front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back through the opening in the mid-frame, and reassemble the phone. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner and held down with some adhesive. The flex cable for the volume keys and power buttons is located on this side and that's also held down with some adhesive. And the same goes for the earpiece speaker which is located on top. There's another liquid damage indicator sticker on the frame underneath the SIM reader and one which goes underneath the charger port. 
For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.